Another example of writing the vector or parametric version of a curve. This is one that we have seen before, um, at least in one form, and that's the preferred form. So let me just put it up here. So we're going to convert this rectangular x squared plus y squared is 16, which we all know is a circle of radius 4. And we're going to convert it to a form r of t. And again, I'm using the component form of the vector. It fits nicely on my paper. But there are other vector notations that are just as useful, and some instructors prefer those notations. Always look to the teacher for that advice. So, anyone recall what the circle of radius 4 looks like in parametric form? Circle centered at the origin. And I'm going to put one more visual clue here. If we start here and we were to go this way around our circle of radius 4, the parametric or vector version is 4 cosine t, 4 sine t. And the values of t, um, although there's lots of flexibility here, sort of a standard way of looking at it would be to let t be 0. So you'd begin at the location 4, comma 0, and then you'd keep going until t is 2 pi. That would take you around the circle one full revolution. Now, we were able to algebraically verify this once upon a time. I'm going to do it just this once here. Since our x component is 4 cosine of t, then we could say that cosine of t is x divided by 4, and the y component is for sine t. So therefore, sine of t would be y divided by 4. And you know one of our favorite trig identities, cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. So therefore, this plus this equals 1 by simple algebraic substitution. And we end up with um, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 16 equals 1, which then is one step away from ta -da, where we were. And look, it all fits on my screen at the same time. So, it would be really simple to convert this to an ellipse well, with a similar um, effort. So, a simple little ellipse, um, which I won't go into to, uh, plotting the points right now. R of T for an ellipse. Um, basically could be done in the form, I'm going to use letters that are familiar in Western textbooks at least, A cosine T, B sine T. If these components, these sorry, these factors are equal, then you get yourself a circle. And if they're not equal, you'd have yourself an ellipse. And if you trace it from 0 to 2 pi, you'll have one full ellipse, which looks something like this when finished. All right. And that would be A units over, and that would be B units up. And the graph, as all vector functions have direction involved, something like that. We have done this before, which is why I'm just sort of putting it up there as a reminder in case this type of problem comes up again. I'd like to look again at the circle, though, in, a comp well, in an algebraic way different from this. Um, this is my preferred, but I want to show you an alternative. 
x squared plus y squared is 16. So if we were to solve this for y equals, we would get two possibilities. The square root of 16 minus x squared, but we would also get the negative square root of 16 minus x squared. These are two different functions. So if I were to attempt to write my R of T using this version right here, I would only be looking at the upper portion of the circle y-axis, x-axis, 4, and 4. I would only be looking at this part of, this, of the circle, um, but I can use that function notation concept. If you let x become t, then y would become the function of t. And in this case, t square root 16 minus t squared. So then I would ask the question, what are the t boundaries that might coincide with this half circle? Well, we could use the picture for help here. Since t is x, it looks like x goes between negative 4 and positive 4. If you were to plot points, t is your input, and x and y coordinates are your output, you would find that if t is negative 4, um, the x value is negative 4, but this will become 0. So it would appear that we start at that point. And just to plot a couple of other simple coordinates, if t is 0, you will get 0 square root of 16, which is 4, which puts us at the top. So we're definitely going that way. And finally, if t is 4, I think you will find that you get this point over here. And it continues to there. And you would have the point four zero. What you do not have is a complete circle. You have only half of a circle and it goes left to right because of our limits with related to functions. Um, little note for my students. Time moves forward. You can pause my talking, but time keeps moving for our lives. So when we set these up later into an integration type problem, it's really important that we follow the same rules I've used with the multiple integrals. We always go from small to big, no matter what happens. So you make sure that your time moves forward. No going back in time. See you later.